Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now as you can as you can see, I really need to watch where I'm going and now that my intro is ruined, I feel like I should just start the video. So this area is all in all just some pretty ordinary Aussie bushland, but my legs are still kind of sore after a 30 kilometer run a couple days ago. So anywhere that's a bit more hilly, a bit more exotic is kind of suboptimal for me at the moment. And thankfully this place is mercifully flat. Quite, hey, Jesus Christ. Where, where are you? Oh, hi. Camera, can you focus please? Thank you. This is, oh, hey. oh, this is fun, isn't it? Let's just stick my hand behind it. That's probably, yeah, there we go. So this is quite a sizable female Hortophora species. Now, Hortophora, unlike the golden orb weavers, they are predominantly nocturnal. So during the day, they'll usually leave their web empty or take it down completely and rest somewhere off to the side. So finding one still sitting on its web like this isn't all that common. And even though their leg spans aren't anywhere near as wide as those of the golden orb weavers, they are quite stocky. Very impressive spiders to look at. And like all orb weavers, these spiders are only mildly venomous and they're very passive too. So if I were to touch the spider's web, either she's not going to react at all, like in this case, or she'll flee to the top or the edge of the web. But this one is actually being very, very cooperative apart from the initial scuffle. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon. All right, well, thank you for sitting still for the camera for so long. I'll uh, leave you to it. Oh, there goes my upper body workout. And for nothing. This is the web of Cartophora exanthematica. Normally they're a lot more covered in debris than this, so it gives me a really good opportunity to show the web's architecture unobstructed. And here, very well camouflaged among these dead leaves, is the occupant of the web. And she's also got herself some company. This is Argerodes fissifrons, and Argerodes species will often inhabit the webs of larger orb-weaving spiders, and they'll be feeding on things like food leftovers or insects that are too small to really get the attention of the resident orb weaver. Well, there's something moving under there. I think it's a gecko. Well, I mean, if I, it has four legs and a tail, so I think I can rule out Huntsman. Yeah, it is a gecko. And I don't think there's anything else in there either. I mean, I could take a deeper look, but I'd prefer not to rip the bark piece off the tree entirely. So, yep, let's move on. Oh. Oh, hi. That is a mature male P. Diana regina, the bark huntsman. Now, as far as huntsmen go, this is quite a small species. You can see my hand there. It's only a few centimeters across, and like I said, this is an adult too, so it's not gonna get any bigger than this. And this also happens to be the first male of this species I've ever seen. This one looks like it might yield something. Oh, hello. That's a juvenile Holconia imanis. This is Torbia, probably Torbia viridissima, but there are a bunch of species in this genus that strongly resemble one another. These are, of course, a type of katydid. Members of this genus are commonly known as the gum leaf katydids because, of course, their wings very strongly resemble a eucalypt leaf, which provides them with excellent camouflage in the foliage. Now this is actually a female, and unlike a lot of the katydids that I've featured on this channel, especially the ones from my trip to Karanda, the ovipositor on this one, while still present, is very small. And the reason for that is that they just attach their eggs to the edge of leaves. They don't have to insert them into substrate or anything, so their ovipositor need not be especially long or complex. 
But anyway, very cool cagedids, and I haven't seen one of these for a couple years, so this was quite a pleasant surprise. This is the malted exuvia of Heteropoda jugulans, and little posts like these, at least I've found, are actually really good places to look for animals. Especially after a bit of rain, which is what we've had lately, which will often dislodge an all assortment of small creatures from the canopy, and a lot of tree-dwelling animals will instinctively climb upwards. So they'll attempt to scale these posts and then find that they've got nowhere further to go. So they'll just hang around here, which makes them very, very easy to spot. Seems to be kind of a day for Katie did today, because this is another species that I've actually featured on this channel uh, a while ago. This is Ephipitatha trachintodorogatata. God, I love saying that name. It's also known as the 32 spotted Katie did and the reason for that name does not become apparent until they reach adulthood and grow their wings. Because their wings have a pattern consisting of 32 dark spots. 16 on each side, of course. And like Torbia viridissima, these are herbivorous katydids, or at least strongly herbivorous. I think pretty much any katydid would scavenge on a dead or dying insect given the chance. But still, they're nowhere near as predatory as some of the other katydids I've featured on this channel, even ones like Ostra Salamona. I have no idea how I didn't miss this on the way. I mean, I literally must have walked right past it. But. This very oh, we've got a threat display here. I've never actually seen that before. Wow. Okay, so anyway, I believe that this very impressively sized stick insect here is- Oh, we got another plane overhead. Ah, oh, reliving memories from the Karanda trip. Okay, so the plane's still there, but I'm just gonna talk anyway. I suspect that this species is Ankyali ostrotessellata which is the tessellated stick insect, and quite a common species around this area too, especially at this time of year. I encounter them semi-regularly. Oh, it's climbed on my camera. Okay. Well, I was... Okay, okay, calm down, you skits. And it's impressive threat display, which of course, having spoken of it, it's not doing anymore. Oh, 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 there we go. Well, for a second, anyway is an example of what's known as diamatic behaviour. So any kind of action, such as in this instance the abrupt revelation of a conspicuous warning structure, that is intended to scare off, or at least shock, a potential predator. But of course, a stick insect's first line of defence is not that display, it's, it's exceptionally good camouflage. Of course, not being seen by a predator in the first place is much better than having to fend one off. But on the off chance that something does spot it, it's good to have something to back it up. This is Pristesanchus plagipennis, quite a common species of assassin bug around here. And it's preying on a golden orb weave, a Trichonephila plumipes. Now I have no idea how it managed to get that spider, presumably caught it outside the web. But either way, it seems like she's gotten herself a pretty handy meal. And I think I'm just going to leave her to it something a little bit different. This is a species of bolet, probably in the genus Boletellus, although I do need to refresh my mushroom knowledge. And like all bolets, the underside of the cat is covered not with gills as you'd typically expect from a mushroom, but with pores. Oh, and actually, now that I notice, there's quite a lot of them in this area. Here's another one. This one seems a little bit more fresh, and given the lighting, the pores that I was talking about before are a lot more visible in this specimen. The pores on these fungi also serve the same function as gills. Basically, this surface here, beneath the cap, is what's known as the fertile surface or hymenium. That is where the spores are held and produced. Now, a complex structure like pores or gills increases the surface area of the hymenium, which allows a greater number of spores to be held by a single fruiting body. Couple more further inside, and 
can see another one off in the distance there. Now chances are all these mushrooms could very well belong to the same fungus. Now if you aren't aware, the mushrooms that you see above the ground are essentially equivalent to the fruit or flower of a plant. They are the reproductive portion. The main body of the fungus is a network of threads called the mycelium, and they'll be spreading out underground, of course, completely invisible from where I am. 